Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to be building a farmhouse style bench to match the style of the kitchen table. I'll be integrating some more complicated joinery on the leg fabrication side of the bench just to add a little bit more interesting and unique features to the bench which would otherwise be a pretty straightforward build. I'm also going to be testing a new type of finish made by Rubio Monaco that I have not used in the past and I'll leave you to be the judge of whether or not you like it or not. So stay tuned and let's get building. About two and a half years ago, my wife and I bought a new house together and I built our family a beautiful farmhouse table to sit in this kitchen area and this particular part of the house overlooks a lake that's behind our backyard and it makes for really nice scenery. It was always the intention to have a bench on the side of the table closest to the windows so that you didn't have the backs of the chairs blocking the view. Well, given that so much time has passed, it's safe to say that that fell off the priority list. But today everything changes because I'm building a bench to fit this table and I'm going to be building it in the same style. To begin the design process, I went into the online version of SketchUp, which is free to use, and I got a working concept that I thought would meet the need and fit the theme of Farmhouse. Now, I did start off my leg design emulating the same design that I used for the table, but I thought that the elements didn't translate on a smaller scaled bench, so I went with a slightly different design. This design is going to be a working concept because I want to use the scrap pieces of walnut that I have left over from other projects, so the design is going to be tweaked to fit the scraps that I have. To begin the fabrication of the legs, I took the scrap pieces of walnut that I had and I started the milling process to get them whittled down to pieces that I could use to construct the legs. As with any time I do milling projects, I start out with a joiner to get two sides that are completely 90 degrees to one another, and then I finish up the milling process using a combination of the table saw and a thickness planer. I set my table saw to two and a half inches and start to rip each of the pieces of wood. Two and a half inches is the width that I'm gonna be using for the leg pieces in my leg design. So I'm going ahead and setting that width now so I don't have to go back and recut these pieces later. To finish off the milling process, I run each of the boards through the thickness planer until every board has had material taken off of it. To make sure that this is happening, I've lightly grazed the tops of each one of the boards with a pencil mark, and I continue to run the boards through the planer until all the pencil marks are gone from each of the boards. Whenever you do this properly, you're left with a series of boards that have the exact same height. And because you've jointed and ripped these with the table saw, they made up to one another perfectly. Once this was done, I then went over to the miter saw and began chopping the pieces to the appropriate length that I can start to construct what's going to become the legs of the bench. As an added design feature, I'm also putting a miter cut on the top of the base of the legs. This is to make the design consistent with what was used on the kitchen table so that it ties in and it looks more like it was a part of the original set. Once all the pieces are cut, I do a quick dry fit to make sure that everything's fitting properly. And I realized that the bench is not gonna be tall enough. So I decided to take out a thicker piece of walnut and start to make the top braces a little bit thicker using a sturdier stock that I had from my walnut collection. I didn't really wanna do this because this lumber is actually pretty expensive and I had something else lined up for it, but it was clear that the scrap pieces that I had just weren't gonna be thick enough to get the look that I was going for and to get the height that I wanted. So I went back to the joiner to begin the milling process all over again, this time with the thicker piece of walnut that was gonna give me the height that I was looking for in the bench. I won't go through all the steps that I took, but it was very similar to what I did before. Instead of scrapping the pieces that I didn't use, I ended up cutting off the end pieces 
turning them around and actually using them as feet to give a little bit more of a design feature to the bottoms of each of the legs. I just used some simple tight bond one and some compression clamps to secure them in place. And after a little bit of sanding, they actually ended up blending in pretty seamlessly with the original piece of wood. One of the lessons I learned whenever I was building the kitchen table is it's a whole lot easier to sand these smaller individual components whenever you have them disassembled rather than waiting until everything is assembled and then you have to try to sand around a fixed piece of furniture and also not sand away some of the sharp edges that you've worked hard to create. So I take a little bit of time here, it didn't take more than about 10 minutes, and just run 120 grit sandpaper over each of these pieces to make sure that all the saw marks are out and it looks reasonably good at this point. This next part was relatively straightforward, especially since I've been doing a lot of desks and tabletops recently. Uh, I started off by taking some of my longer pieces of walnut and running them through the jointer to get two straight edges and then planing them and ripping them to the right width. Um, for the bench top itself, I'm actually going to glue up three different pieces of wood together to form the bench top. And then I'm going to put a nice angled edge on either side of the long side of the bench to get the design look that I'm going for uh, to tie in with the farmhouse theme. After jointing and planing each of the three long pieces of walnut, I went over to the table saw to rip the remaining rough edge off of each of the pieces. There was one plank that was particularly large and I cut a extra thick piece off of the end that I'm going to use as a cross member in the construction of the legs of the bin. You'll see that in a future step, but I did want to point that out here because if it looks like I'm taking off a lot from this plank, there's a reason why. For the glue up, I just put down some butcher paper, get out four of my parallel clamps, and use a little bit of tight bond two in order to complete the glue up. This is one of the smaller and simpler glue ups I've done from a panel glue up like this, so this is pretty straightforward. If you've seen some of my other videos, sometimes I have to get a little bit creative with how I find ways to actually glue up some of the larger panels, but this is pretty straightforward. I try to wipe off of as much excess glue as I can just to make the sanding process a little bit easier. But once that dries, I then take some compression clamps and a straight edge of a piece of wood. Here I'm using walnut. And I use my circular saw to put a nice clean edge on the end of the table. If I had a track saw, I would use it here, but unfortunately I don't. So I just have to get creative with the tools that I have. I flip the table over and repeat the same process on the other side. Here you can get a better view for just how much sawdust the circular saw generates. Um, I've got my dust collection hose kind of clamped down to the table to catch as much of it as I can, but I'll tell you what, this makes an absolute mess. So uh, try to take care if you're doing this inside of a shop where you're trying to keep things clean. Now that both edges have a nice clean ripped edge, I then begin the sanding process. I don't go very far at this particular stage, but I start out with 80 grit, mostly to get rid of the saw marks on the side of the edges that you just cut, as well as get rid of the remaining glue that exists in between the seams. I'll sand to a finer grit at a later stage, but this is just some of the preliminary sanding to get it in a semi-finished state. With the bench top now in a position to begin the assembly process, I go back to my table and measure the distance in between the two legs. My goal is to have the bench be able to slide in between those two legs so that you can push the bench out of the way if you ever need to walk around the table for whatever reason. So you see me here taking measurements specifically to space out the legs to where they just fit inside of the legs of the existing table. I mark with a pencil where each of the leg assemblies are gonna go because in the next step, I'm gonna take the cross brace and begin to map out where I need to make some of the dado cuts to have the interlocking joinery on the leg assembly. Once everything is in place, I use a square to help me align the upper part of the leg assembly and begin to make marks on each piece of wood where the 
interlocking joinery is going to happen. With pencil marks made, I then head over to my crosscut sled and begin to cut out notches where the two pieces of wood are going to intersect. Now, whenever you're doing this, it's better to be on the side of too tight as opposed to too loose. So as you're kind of getting closer to where those two pieces are gonna come together, make sure to start out tight and progressively take smaller cuts to where they just barely interlock and fit. You want it to be a tight friction fit, not loose. If it's loose, it won't have the right look and it's not gonna have the same strength that you're looking for in that joint. If you do this properly, you're left with two pieces that perfectly intersect with one another and it creates the illusion that the two pieces are kind of seamless in how they interact with one another and it looks like that beam just goes straight through each of the two leg assemblies. But from a structural standpoint, you've got a really strong joint that's gonna hold up to the pressures and the stresses that the bench is gonna see in its lifetime. With the hard part done, it's just a matter of assembling the various pieces that were cut and sanded earlier in the process and making sure that each of the legs remain level as you're assembling this upside down. To put this together, I used a combination of wood glue, walnut dowels, and some brad finish nails in some areas. I also added a cross brace to provide more lateral stability on the bench. So you see me here using my cross cut sled to add some notches in each of the leg assemblies so that the cross member fits seamlessly into each one of the leg assemblies. The dowels that I used for assembly were half inch. So you see me here drilling a half inch hole into the bottom side of the leg as well as a half inch hole in the leg assembly itself. So I use a combination of wood glue along with this walnut dowel to get a really nice snug fit in an area of the bench that's likely to see a lot of stress. To install the lateral brace, I apply a little bit of wood glue to the notch that was cut in each of the leg assemblies in a prior step. The wood itself is a pretty snug fit, so it's got a really nice interference connection between the leg assembly and the brace, but the wood glue will ensure that it'll never slip out due to any kind of lateral loading. With all the pieces assembled, I used my longer Bora parallel clamps just to ensure that there was even pressure and that each of the legs was level and parallel as the glue in each of the leg assemblies was set up. The finish I used on this bench is the Rubio Monocoat in the walnut color. You mix this three parts oil to one part accelerator and the finish takes about seven days to fully cure when you mix them in those ratios. I've used Rubio Monocoat in the past but only their clear version. This is the first time I've used the walnut stain of their Rubio Monocoat product and I was really excited. Now the first time that I applied it, it was a little bit scary because the paste itself has a black color to it. But once you apply it and actually rub it into the grain of the wood, it looks really attractive. It darkens some of the sapwood that you have in the walnut, and it accentuates a lot of the darker features within the grain of the wood itself, which is the look that I like personally. When I originally finished the kitchen table two and a half years ago, I used a polyurethane, and I ended up being somewhat disappointed in the final color of the table. So you would have seen in the previous um, picture of the table that it came out with a lot of amber tones, 
but I really like the darker features of Walnut that you end up seeing here. So I think a future project for me is going to be refinishing the kitchen table to achieve this same rich matte dark walnut color that the Rubio Monaco Walnut provides. What I like about the finish is that it goes on very easily. You just wipe it on and you buff it off. And whenever the product fully cures, the wood almost feels soft to the touch. It's got a very smooth, very natural look to it. And you're not left with that plastic top coat that you get with some polyurethanes and some lacquers. So here's how the final product turned out. From a styling and aesthetic standpoint, I couldn't be happier. I feel like the farmhouse elements of the design closely resemble that that was used to create the original table. Now the coloring is a little bit off, but that was somewhat intentional. I didn't necessarily like the original amber color of the table, so I experimented with something new in the bench, and I think that the end result is gonna involve me refinishing the table to match the bench. And now that we have a bench on that side of the table instead of two chairs with high backrests, we have an unobstructed view of the lake, which is one of the main reasons why my wife and I fell in love with this house to begin with. I also like that the bench can be slid completely under the table and moved out of the way in case we ever need to get around the table for whatever reason. That's going to be it for this video. I had a ton of fun making this bench and got a chance to brush up on my skill sets of interlocking joinery as well as trying to style match a piece of furniture to something that I had created previously. I hope you got something out of this video too. Hope I inspired you to try something new in your shop. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.